So we went over the derivation of a reduced density matrix using the concept of partial trace. But in the previous video, we made some assumptions on how to get there. We assumed that the state was pure and we assumed that our state was separable. And then we said that by linearity, our derivation could be extended to any state, even if it's entangled. Uh, but then I started thinking that maybe it wasn't so clear. So I wanted to make this bonus video. So you don't have to watch this if you're happy with the derivation you, we just went through, but it might help clarify a few things. So first, let's say we have a composite system with subsystems A and B. And, and we've been defining that for each of our subsystems, we can have an orthonormal uh, basis, right? And for system A, we call this phi sub u with u going from zero to n. And for system B, we have chi sub v with v going from zero to m, where this n is two to the n minus one, and the lowercase n is the number of qubits in A, and this capital M is two to the m minus one with this m number of qubits in B, right? And this is our basis for system B. As an example, we can look at a, a three qubit system. So let's call the qubit on the top qubit A, and the qubits at the bottom qubit B1 and qubit B2. And let's say that we have a circuit that generates a GHZ state. So let's say this top qubit, we apply Hadamard gate, and then we apply CX gates with the qubits at the bottom. And we're gonna call this qubit on the top our subsystem A and there's two qubits at the bottom, subsystem B. Okay, so following this definition of some orthonormal basis for system A and system B, we know that if we use the computational basis for system A, we have state zero and state one. And for system B, we have zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. And our total output state, let's call it theta, is given by one over root two. And let's explicitly separate the qubits here. So we say qubit zero A tensored zero zero B plus one A tensored one one B. By notation, we just write this as zero, zero, zero and one, 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 but just to explicitly denote what corresponds to each subsystem, we've labeled them with A's and B's. So what we mentioned in the previous video is that we can represent any state, even an entangled state, as sums of products of the basis vectors of each of the two subsystems multiplied by some coefficients. So here, alpha u sub b. In the case of our example, if we just expand this two summations term by term, we have something of the form So here, all we have is that alpha zero zero is equal to alpha one three, which is equal to one over root two, and all other alpha u sub v is equal to zero, right? So here we, we can see that even for an entangled state, like the one we have here, we can express it as a sum of terms that are product states of the basis of each of the two subsystems. 
So now let's talk about what would be the density matrix for a state like this. So if we define a density matrix omega as the outer product of, of theta with itself, then we would have, well, the cat of this will be just this same expression here. And then the bra will be same as that. But we change the cats for bras. And we need to apply the complex conjugate to this coefficients. We also need to use different indices so that we perform the outer product for all possible terms. So let's use indices w, k, w, k. Okay, and here we can rearrange things a little bit to make this expression more clear. So we can say omega is equal to, and because these alphas are just numbers, we can move them around. And I'm gonna just use one summation term for this u and w going from zero to n, and then for v and k going from zero to m. And all this really means is that I have two summation terms, one for u and one for w. But just to make things more compact, I'm writing them um, as one summation. And then we can express this multiplication of alpha sub u v and alpha sub w k complex conjugate as a single coefficient. Let's call it a rho u v w k. And then we can rearrange things. Since this phi sub u and phi sub w are in the space of subsystem A, and this chi sub v and chi sub k are in the space of subsystem B, we can group them in the following way. We can now say phi sub u, outer product phi sub w, and then tensored with chi sub v, chi sub k. And this is the expression for our density matrix. So let's put this in a, in a little box. And here we can say that this rho u v w k is alpha u v multiply with alpha complex conjugate w k. And then this term here is all possible outer product combinations of subsystem A. So that's uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, and so on and so forth. And this term here is all possible combination of outer products in our subsystem B. So in the example we had, we will have here 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and so on and so forth till we get to 1, 1, 1, 1. So now we have this definition for a density matrix for an arbitrary pure state, but again, it can be entangled or it can be separable, it doesn't matter. And we want to use this to calculate the reduced density matrix of our system. But before doing that, we just need to remember one important property of density matrices. We know that if we have the state zeta and we evolve it through a unitary u, well, that's just basically u theta, right? And we said that for density matrices, if we have omega, and we evolve it through a unitary u, well, if we will get an omega prime, let's call it, equal to u omega u dagger. Now, furthermore, if we have a, a unitary u, that is composed of unitaries that are applied to two subsystems separately. Well, we know that this is a composite unitary of the form UA Kronecker UB. So if we were to find, for example, omega prime 
using this expression we have above, we can take this summation and then apply our unitary UA tensor UB and on the other side UA tensor UB and then dagger, right? But this is UA dagger tensor UB dagger, right? And then we can distribute this into the components of each subsystem. And we said, you know, this part of our summation is what corresponds to subsystem A, and this is what corresponds to subsystem B. So our omega prime can be rewritten as Here, the unitary for just A, and unitary A dagger, and here UB, and UB dagger. So we're applying the unitary that corresponds to subsystem A to the summation terms that are part of subsystem A, and then applying the unitary for subsystem B to the terms in the summation that are part of subsystem B. And now with this, we can proceed to look into the reduced density matrix definition. So let's recall that the definition of the reduced density matrix for let's say subsystem A, it's given by the partial trace over B of the density matrix of our composite system AB. And this is given by the sum for T equals zero to M. Now in the past I've used the subscript B here, but um, because I, I've used it here, I need a, a new one, so I'm using T in this case, of the identity matrix over A tensored with the bra of chi sub T on the density matrix AB, and then on this side we have identity A tensored with the ket of chi sub T. So now if, if we take a close look at this, well, these terms right here, you can see them as some operation being applied on the density matrix AB. And it's not very difficult to show that, you know, if I call this gamma, uh, the term on this side is actually gamma transpose conjugate. So this is very similar to the example we just saw above of applying some unitary U to a density matrix, right? And then we see that we can, if, if we can decompose this unitary into something that is acting on subsystem A and something that is acting on subsystem B, we can then distribute these terms to multiply just the components of the summations of each of the subsystems, right? So we can do the exact same thing here. So here, we know that this identity is only acting on subsystem A, and this bra is only operating on subsystem B, and the same on this side. This only uh, operates on A, and this cat only operates on B. So, if we take this expression again, and just replace our row AB with the definition the general definition we have above, we get so what we can do here is just move these identities to operate only on the summation terms that correspond to subsystem A and then move this cat and bra to operate only on the part of that corresponds to subsystem B. So if we do that we get Okay, and this is very interesting because we have these two inner products here that, as we know, would only give us one if t is equal to v and k is equal to t, meaning that v equals to k. And those are only the terms in subsystem b that have a diagonal component to them. So, for example, if we look at uh, the term 0, 0, 0, 0, well, that's a, a matrix 
with a one here and then zeros everywhere, right? So that has a diagonal component, this one right here. If we look at, for example, the term zero, 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 one, then this doesn't have a diagonal component because the one is on this um, term here. So this term uh, will be equal to zero. So in summary, we can say that what this sandwiching with this chi sub t of, of this terms of the other products of eigenstates in subsystem B is just equivalent to applying the trace to each of those elements, right? So applying the trace to chi v chi sub k. So we can rewrite this expression above as rho sub a. Well, these identities are not doing anything, right? And here, these terms are basically applying a trace operator to subsystem B. And this is why we say that this operation we're doing here is called a partial trace because we're leaving subsystem A alone by applying this identity and then we're tracing through all the elements on subsystem B. The last thing to note here is that because this trace is guaranteeing that we're only picking the elements where V is equal to K, right? All the other elements are just going to give us zero. Well, we can get rid of this summation with sub index T in the expression because it's already guaranteed that we're only going to get the terms that where V is equal to K. So we can rewrite this, this expression rho sub A as just this summation. And we can do the same thing for rho sub b. So we have the sum for u and w from 0 to n and the sum for v and k from 0 to m of rho u v w k. And now we have the trace over subsystem A tensored with the elements of subsystem B. So chi v chi sub k, right? And, you know, this is why we say that these two operations are the partial trace over B of rho AB, right? And this one is the partial trace over A of rho AB. And another important thing to note here, and this is not very difficult to show, is that when you have the trace of some other product of some arbitrary elements, let's call them A and B, this is actually equal to the inner product of B with A. And, you know, when you're taking the trace, what you're doing is just summing over the diagonal elements of this, this matrix. And uh, you, can, you can prove that uh, it, you end up with the same summation of terms when you perform this inner product. So what this means is that this trace right here is the same as having the inner product of chi k with chi v, right? Which is actually the Kronecker delta of kv. And if you don't remember the definition of the Kronecker delta, this is just equal to 1 only for k equal to v and 0 for when k is different than v. And the same here, right? This will be the inner product of phi sub w with phi sub u. So this means that uh, this is a um, perhaps an easier way to perform these calculations if we can decompose the density matrix rho AV into the product of the basis states of each of the two subsystems. So I hope this clarifies things a little bit and it makes it a little bit easier to understand why this expression works for any arbitrary state.